Get ready for an auditory treat. These voices are like chocolate for the ears. And today I'm going to read it to you. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movie narrations. When they found Carbone in the meat truck, he was frozen so stiff it took them two days to thaw him out for the autopsy. For this list, we're only including feature-length films, and we're excluding documentaries as well as films where the narrator speaks to the audience on camera, because we've already got you covered there with the top 10 fourth wall breaks in film. This is my ninth sick day this semester. It's getting pretty tough coming up with new illnesses. If I go for 10, I'm probably gonna have to barf up a lung. Number 10, Ewan McGregor, Train Spotting. Choose life, choose a job, choose a career, choose a family. Choose a f***ing big television. Choose washing machines, cars, compact displays, and electrical tin openers. This movie, about a group of heroin-addicted friends, is narrated by the main character, Mark Renton. Take the best orgasm you ever had. Multiply it by a thousand and you're still nowhere near it. And Mark relates the ups and downs of life as a junkie. When you're on junk, you've only one worry, scoring. And when you're off it, you're suddenly obliged to worry about all sorts of other shite. In his thick Scottish accent, McGregor takes us through the everyday events of someone who's attempting to turn his plate around, but must shake off the influence of his friends. Because of the honesty and melancholy in his voice, audiences feel compassion for McGregor's character. And to thank them, he injects his commentary with some comedy. 1,000 years from now, there'll be no guys and no girls, just wankers. Sounds great to me. Number 9. Guy Pierce, Memento. So where are you? You're in some motel room. You just you just wake up and you're in, in a motel room. There's the key. It feels like maybe it's just the first time you've been there, but perhaps you've been there for a week. In a film about someone whose memory doesn't stretch beyond five minutes, a guiding light is needed to make sense of the events. Don't believe his lies. He is the one. Kill him. I finally found him. How long have I been looking? The narration in Memento helps the viewer keep track of the intricate details, but since we're getting the story from the main character, Leonard Shelby, the facts can't be fully trusted. You don't want the truth. You make up your own truth. As the film progresses, we slowly get the impression that Shelby is not only lying to us, but to himself as well. Do I lie to myself to be happy? In your case, Teddy. Yes, I will. Number eight, Gene Shepard, A Christmas Story. My mother, grabbing for her copy of Look magazine, <laughs> would find herself cleverly trapped into reading a Red Rider sales pitch. The real-life author of the book on which this movie is based, Gene Shepard is also the voice of this holiday film, recounting his biographical anecdotes as an older version of the bespectacled Ralphie. Something had happened. A fuse blew, and I had gone out of my skull. <laughs> What's interesting about this narration is we're getting the story straight from the source, resulting in an authenticity rarely achieved when an actor reads straight from a script. I have since heard of people under extreme duress speaking in strange tongues. I became conscious that a steady torrent of obscenities and swearing of all kinds was pouring out of me as I screamed. By writing the book and screenplay, as well as offering up the commentary, Shepard gave us a holiday classic in A Christmas Story. Oh, fudge. Only I didn't say fudge. I said the word, the big one, the queen mother of dirty words, the F dash 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 word. What did you say? Uh, uh. Number seven, Ray Liotta, Goodfellas. If you're part of a crew, nobody ever tells you that they're going to kill you. Doesn't happen that way. There aren't any arguments or curses like in the movies. So your murderers come with smiles. They come as your friends. Ripped straight from the pages of Nicholas Pileggi's biographical book, Wise Guy, this movie follows notorious real-life gangster Henry Hill as he works his way up the mob ladder. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. <laughs> Ray Liotta portrays the film's protagonist, and it's his voice that gives us a first-person glimpse of the loves and life of a successful mobster. It was like a load off my mind. Poor bastard. 
Never knew how close he'd come to getting killed. Even if I told him, he would have never believed me. Leota comes across as genuinely involved in the story he's telling, leading the audience down a rabbit hole of crime and corruption. Right after I got here, I ordered some spaghetti with marinara sauce and I got egg noodles and ketchup. I'm an average nobody. I get to live the rest of my life like a schnook. My name is Lester Burnham. Number six, Kevin Spacey, American Beauty. This is my neighborhood. This is my street. This is my life. Beginning the movie with an interesting twist, the first thing the main character of American Beauty tells us is of his impending demise. In less than a year, I'll be dead. With his narration, Spacey conveys an ethereal detachment from his situation, and the viewer is invited to share his thoughts and feelings on the last year of his life as he lives it. It's the weirdest thing. I feel like I've been in a coma for about 20 years, and I'm just now waking up. The sense of doom is lightened somewhat, however, by the calm tone of the narration and Lester's claim that he's found happiness. I had always heard your entire life flashes in front of your eyes the second before you die. First of all, that one second isn't a second at all. It stretches on forever, like an ocean of time. Number five, Richard Dreyfus, Stand By Me. I was 12 going on 13 the first time I saw a dead human being. After the untimely death of his childhood friend, Gordy Lachance reminisces about his youthful experiences and friendships while writing a memoir. Milo had trained Chopper not just to sick, but to sick specific parts of the human anatomy. Thus, a kid who had illegally scaled the junkyard fence might hear the dread cry, Chopper, sick balls. As Richard Dreyfus portrays the adult version of the story's central character, it's his words that move the plot along. Chopper, sick him, boy! Now he said, sick him, boy. But what I heard was, Chopper, sick balls. With a sense of calm, wisdom, and nostalgia, Dreyfus details the final days of his last summer as a carefree kid in this premature coming-of-age story, contrasting the hopeful dreams of his intelligent younger self with the learned insights that only come with age. Number four, Malcolm McDowell, A Clockwork Orange. One thing I could never stand was to see a filthy, dirty old drunkie howling away at the filthy songs of his fathers and going blurp, blurp in between, as it might be a filthy old orchestra in his stinking, rotten guts. Seeing things from the perspective of a psychotic criminal may not be the most settling experience, but since when did Stanley Kubrick want to make his audience comfortable? So far, the first film was a very good professional piece of cine, like it was done in Hollywood. Alex DeLarge narrates his illicit exploits with a sinister glee, as he and his ne'er-do-well droog friends commit horrendous acts of ultra-violence. And it was like, for a moment, oh my brothers, some great bird had flown into the milk bar, and I felt all the melancholy little hairs on my plot standing endwise. His voice becomes a creepy earworm that highlights the movie's slow intensity and eeriness, while also letting us in on the secrets of his inner monologues and musical preferences. It had been a wonderful evening, and what I needed now to give it the perfect ending was a bit of the old Ludwig van. Number three, Tom Hanks, Forrest Gump. They just couldn't believe that somebody would do all that running for no particular reason. Spawning some of history's most repeated movie quotes. Run, Forrest, run! Forrest Gump is a simple man trying to navigate a complicated world. Now you wouldn't believe it if I told you. But I can run like the wind blows. Viewed from the eyes of someone who isn't mentally gifted, but who has enough heart for ten men, this narration gives the audience a first-person perspective of just how absurd our lives can be and how seriously we can take them. The good thing about Vietnam is there was always some place to go. Forrest tries to make sense of everything, and Tom Hanks' exaggerated accent and kind voice are the perfect delivery system for the film's hopeful message. She had got the cancer and died on a Tuesday. I bought her a new hat with little flowers on it. And that's all I have to say about that. Number two, 
Edward Norton, Fight Club. With a gun barrel between your teeth, you speak only in vowels. A movie with this many twists and turns needs a narrator to guide the viewer through to the end, unreliable as he may be. For a second, I totally forget about Tyler's whole controlled demolition thing, and I wonder how clean that gun is. Having the main character narrate is also a benefit because we get to see inside the protagonist's mind and really know what he's thinking. If you wake up at a different time, in a different place, could you wake up as a different person? In this case, we get the sense of a man who is slowly losing control and who'll do just about anything he can to hold on to his last shred of sanity. you Mr. Durden. You're the one who gave me this. Please return your seat backs to their full, upright, and locked position. Before we narrate our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. This is the most magnificent discarded living room set I've ever seen. Being at Old Orchard Mall kind of reminded me of being home in Africa, by the watering hole, and the animals are in heat. I wondered how it would be when I died. What it'd be like to know that this breath now was the last one you was ever going to draw. You're in a box. Anything at all. A moving box. You will find that I am available. They want you dead. Or in their line. Goldie. She says her name is Goldie. The Valkyrie at my side is shouting and laughing with the pure, hateful, bloodthirsty joy of the slaughter. And so am I. Number one, Morgan Freeman, The Shawshank Redemption. There must be a con like me in every prison in America. I'm the guy who can get it for you. Cigarettes, a bag of reefer, if that's your thing, a bottle of brandy to celebrate your kid's high school graduation, damn near anything within reason. With a voice described as buttery caramel for the ears, this cinema legend is considered by most as the king of narration. I remember my first night. Seems like a long time ago. In this adapted Stephen King story, Freeman is a long-term prisoner of the eponymous penitentiary who befriends the film's main character. There's a harsh truth to face. No way I'm gonna make it on the outside. Guiding the viewer to the film's climax, Freeman lets his voice score the entirety of Shawshank with his matter-of-fact, thoughtful observations on the events that happen around him and the people who cross his path. All I do anymore is think of ways to break my parole. So maybe they'd send me back. Do you agree with our list? What movie has your favorite narration? She's forgotten you, old man. You're alone. For more epic top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Babies don't sleep this well. Thank you.